Hello everybody, welcome back to another exciting edition of Ed Puzzle Lecture Notes. Today we're going to try to explain a pretty difficult concept. It is the nerve impulse, or what's other co otherwise called an action potential. This is how neurons talk to each other and how neurons, quote unquote, talk to your muscles and glands. Now, when I make something clear, at the end of this Ed Puzzle, I definitely do not expect you to be like, oh, I totally get it. I understand how this works. This is going to be kind of complicated, and hopefully you can just take some notes down. There's going to be another Ed Puzzle, and then I'm going to explain it again in class. Hopefully by then you'll maybe understand, like, okay, now I'm starting to get it. Now, first things first, neurons are what's called excitable. And I'm going to compare it to this thing right here. That's the best I could draw. That's a mouse trap. So this mouse trap is still set. You can see the little, the little piece of cheese right there. Now, this mouse trap is just sitting there ready to fire. It is, it is resting right now. It's in what a neuron would call its resting membrane potential. It is waiting for a stimulus that's strong enough. So if you blow on this, you know, if you blow on that cheese, that's not going to be strong enough. But if a mouse comes and presses on that cheese, this little metal, you know, mallet little thing is going to come down and slam shut. That's kind of like the same thing how a neuron reacts. If a neuron gets stimulated by neurotransmitters or some sort of stimulus from the environment, if it is strong enough, boom, the neuron is going to fire an action potential, which is going to travel down the axon to the axon terminals, and then the synaptic end bulbs, which will release neurotransmitters on the other side. Now, it's important to know that the stimulus has to be strong enough, just like the mouse trap. If it's not strong enough to make the mouse trap snap, the mouse trap just stays there. Same thing with a neuron. A neuron either fires a full action potential or it does not fire at all. That's called the all or none principle. And the way this works, there's two main ions which are very important. Sodium ions, Na+, and also potassium ions, K+. And they're the ones that for the most part initiate that action potential which will travel down the axon and to the axon terminals. So before we get going, a little review from bio. I know it's been at least a year or two since you guys took regular biology, but a little review on what's called diffusion. And this will be a, a type of diffusion called facilitated diffusion, facilitated diffusion, because it is going to use a protein channel. So diffusion is the movement of a substance from high concentration to low concentration. Now regular diffusion, like if you sprayed perfume on right now in class, people right around you would smell it instantly. Eventually it would start to spread out. That is diffusion. That is your per perfume moving from high concentration, you know, on you, towards low concentration. It does it all by itself. But facilitated diffusion is the same thing. It goes from high to low concentration but it needs a protein channel. So here we go. We're going to use the, the red pluses. That is the sodium ions. So this right there, that's going to be the axon of a neuron. And we're going to put some pluses. And we're going to put a high concentration of sodium ions outside the neuron. High concentration out here. We're going to put a very low concentration of sodium, sodium ions inside. So that's low concentration. So all by themselves, these sodium ions, they want to come in. They want to go from high to low concentration, but they're blocked. They cannot come in unless this little gate opens up and lets them in. And if the neuron is stimulated enough, that channel will open up and these sodium ions will rush in all by themselves from high to low concentration. And you can see if there's a lot of 
plus, so there's a lot of positively charged sodium ions on the outside, it's going to be negatively charged on the inside. So these sodium ions will just start to rush in all by themselves. So that's a little review on diffusion. The movement of solutes from high concentration to low concentration does not require any energy. They do it all by themselves. All right, so on the next slide, it's going to talk about the resting membrane potential. But it doesn't really say how that works, so I'm going to try to explain that here as best I can using this very crude diagram right here. All right, so this protein structure right there, that's called the sodium-potassium pump. Sodium-potassium pump. Now this thing is, it's a protein that's pumping ions against their concentration gradient. So it's pumping them from low to high concentration. Anytime you go from low to high, it requires energy. Now in diffusion, when you're going from high to low, it does not require any energy. It goes all by itself. But anyways, to, to get this resting membrane potential, kind of like the mouse trap, when it's set and it's ready to snap on a mouse, the sodium-potassium pump actively transports three Na plus or sodium ions out and two potassium ions in. And it continuously does that. So three more pluses on the outside, two more positively charged potassiums on the inside, three more positive sodiums on the outside, two more on the inside. As you can see, and I know you guys know this, three is more than two. So we're gonna have more positively charged ions on the outside relative to the inside. We also have these proteins on the inside which are negatively charged. So since we're getting more positively charged ions on the outside relative to the inside, the inside is gonna get a negative charge. And that's what's called the resting membrane potential. And it's gonna be about negative 70 millivolts. And that is what's called the resting membrane potential, which mostly is maintained by the sodium potassium pumps, which pump out three sodium ions and pumps in two potassium ions. All right, so here are, the, here are the terms. And basically these things mean pretty much the same thing. A neuron is polarized or it's in its resting membrane potential when it's sitting there at negative 70 millivolts. Remember, that's just like a mousetrap that is ready to fire. If, if the stimulus is enough, if the cheese gets moved enough by the mouse, whoosh, the mousetrap will fire. Same thing with a neuron. It is sitting there in its resting membrane potential, waiting for a stimulus that's great enough to make it fire an action potential. All right, so the ion channels. These are proteins which are embedded within the cell membrane, the membrane of the neuron, so like the membrane of the axon or the dendrites or, or the cell body or around the axon hillock. These are proteins that some of them, like these guys, the sodium potassium pumps, remember these are not like, not like doors, these require ATP energy, and these guys pump out three Na plus ions outside the neuron, and they pump in two K plus ions. Remember, three is more than two, so on the outside it's gonna be positively charged on the inside of the neuron, this is the inside, inside it's going to be negatively charged. Remember, the resting membrane potential is about negative 70 millivolts. Now there's other kind of proteins, ion channels, like this little crude drawing here, which open up for different reasons. Now these ion channels can open up for, you know, several different reasons. Now we're going to pretend like this is a sodium channel. This is a sodium channel. It only allows sodium ions to pass through. Now remember, the resting membrane potential is negative 70 millivolts. Now, when a neuron becomes stimulated, the inside of that neuron becomes more positive. If it becomes, if it gets up to negative 55 millivolts, and I know that's still negative, but negative 55 is more positive than negative 70. If it reaches that,
this little door here on this protein channel is going to swing open. And that is going to allow sodium ions to rush into the cell from high concentration to low concentration. So this particular protein channel or ion channel is opens at a specific polarity or a specific voltage and that's why they're called this one is called voltage gated ion channels and it would open up whenever it reaches negative 55 millivolts and the different types of ion channels first you have leakage or non gated channels these are basically channels which do not have a door they're always open remember the sodium potassium pump is always pumping out three in a plus ions and they're pumping in two K plus ions so these channels in a plus I forgot the plus oops not gonna let me do it all right in a plus the in a plus is gonna want to move in through their leak leak uh, channels and the the K plus the potassium ions are gonna want to leak out both of them are moving from high concentration to low concentration now nerve cells have more K plus or potassium channels than they do sodium channels. So more potassium or K plus is diffusing out through the channels than sodium ions or Na plus are diffusing in. And that's what also helps to establish that negative 70 millivolts, the resting membrane potential with it inside the neuron. Now these leakage, non-gated channels are great, but this is where it's at. This is what you need to know. The gated channels. They open and close in response to a certain stimulus. This one, voltage gated, open in response to a change in voltage or a change in polarity. So like I said on the last slide, the resting potential is negative 70 millivolts. If it reaches negative 55 millivolts, boom. Bolted gated channels open up in response to that. Another type of channel is the ligand gated channels. They open and close in response to a particular chemical stimuli, a hormone, a neurotransmitter, an ion, etc. They're kind of like a door that requires a key. So, so say like if this was the dendrites of one neuron, if a specific neurotransmitter strikes a protein on that dendrite, it will allow sodium ions to rush in because it opens up that door. A specific neurotransmitter opens up that, that protein channel, that ligand-gated channel. And the last one is a mechanically-gated channel. And that is open and closed by some sort of mechanical stimulus, like, like a pressure. Pressure makes, let's say the dendrite again, more leaky, and that causes sodium ions to rush in. And that's a mechanically gated channel. All right, so here's a couple different gated ion channels. This is a voltage gated potassium or K plus channel. Now here the neuron is in its resting membrane potential of negative 70 millivolts, so it's like a mouse trap that's just sitting there waiting for a mouse. Now we're going to get rid of this negative 50. I don't believe that's true. Could it be true? Yes, but I don't think it is. I think that number is much closer to positive 30 millivolts than it is to negative 50, but I might be wrong. Anyways, right now the voltage-gated potassium channel is closed. Now it's just waiting for the membrane potential to reach a certain polarity. And it's going to reach a certain polarity. I believe it's around positive 20, positive 30, somewhere around there, where that door opens up and allows these potassium or K plus ions to rush out from high concentration to low concentration. So these voltage gated channels change or open in response to a change in the polarity or a membrane potential. Now this is a different one. This is the ligand gated channel. It opens and closes to a specific key, usually a neurotransmitter. 
In this case, it's the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. So when this little neurotransmitter comes in and fits in perfectly, boop, opens up the channel and allows, in this case, probably sodium ions to rush into the, into the neuron. So basically what you need to know, voltage-gated channels open and close in response to what the polarity or what the charge is where ligand gated channels open and close to specific little keys, specific neurotransmitters or, or hormones. All right, the resting membrane potential. Remember that is negative 70 millivolts on the inside relative to the outside. So it's more negative on the inside of the neuron than it is on the outside. And remember this is because there are more sodium ions on the outside of the neuron and there's more potassium ions on the inside. So if you can see right here, the red pluses is sodium ions and the blue pluses are potassium ions. This right here is inside the neuron. You can see there's a lot more red pluses on the outside than there is on the inside. And there's a lot more blue pluses on the inside versus the outside. So just by diffusion, these red pluses want to move into the neuron, and these blue potassium ions want to move out. Now you won't need to know the exact ratio of how many are on the inside to the outside, so don't worry about that. But remember, when it's at rest, when it's at negative 70 millivolts, the cell is polarized. It is that mouse trap that is ready to snap. So remember, the extracellular fluid outside the neuron, very rich in sodium ions because the sodium-potassium pump continuously pumps out three sodium ions. It also has chloride ions, which are negative. The inside has a lot of potassium or K-plus ions. It also has organic phosphates, PO4, which are negatively charged, and amino acids and proteins, which are also negatively charged. That's what gives the inside its negative charge, negative 70 millivolts on the inside. Now, if you graphed an action potential, it would look something like this. Not the greatest graph in the world, but... So this is time in milliseconds going this way. So this is the neuron. It's in its resting membrane potential. It's, it's a little mousetrap ready to snap. It's at negative 70 millivolts. Uh-oh. Right here, it starts to become stimulated by something. It might be another neuron that it's releasing its neurotransmitters into the synapse, and this neuron's dendrites are receiving those neurotransmitters, opening up sodium channels, allowing some sodium to start to come into the neuron. Well, that makes the neuron become more positive. Even though, I mean, it's still overall negative, it starts to become more and more positive. If it reaches this magic number of negative 55 millivolts, that's called the threshold. Threshold. Doesn't really look like it, but threshold. If it reaches negative 55 millivolts, boom. All the sodium channels open and sodium rushes into the cell, which causes it to become way positive up to around positive 30 millivolts. Now as it reaches into the positives, these sodium channels close, their doors shut. Sodium can no longer come into the neuron, but the potassium doors, those potassium ions open, and that allows those potassium ions to rush out of the neuron. Since those positively charged potassium ions are rushing out, that causes the inside of the neuron to become negative again with all those positively charged potassium rushing out. Now remember, when it's at negative 70, that's when a neuron is polarized. It's in its resting membrane potential or it's polarized. When, during an action potential, when it becomes positive, this phase, this number two, that's called depolarization. Depolarization. Now, when it comes, when it starts to come back down and become more negative again, this number four, that's called repolarization, R-E, repolarization, because the neuron is, is attempting to repolarize. It wants to get back into that resting membrane potential. 
Now you can see here for a very brief time, the neuron actually gets below negative 70 millivolts. And this right here in the purple is called hyperpolarization, where it's actually polarized more than its resting membrane potential of negative 70. But eventually, the sodium potassium pumps will take over and return the neuron back into its resting membrane potential of negative 70 millivolts. And once again, the resting membrane potential, remember that is negative 70 millivolts. That's when the neuron is basically just a loaded mousetrap ready to snap. All the voltage gated, ions are closed, the leakage channels are open, allowing K plus to leak out and even smaller amounts of sodium or Na plus to leak in. And this neuron is just waiting for a stimulus large enough to start allowing Na plus or sodium ions to start leaking in, which causes the resting potential to become more and more positive. And remember, if it reaches that magic number of negative 55 millivolts, the threshold, boom, an action potential will occur. All right, so once again, the depolarization phase of the action potential. Remember, that's negative 70 millivolts. That's when a neuron is just at its resting potential. Now, if it starts to be stimulated by, say, a neurotransmitter, it starts to become depolarized. If it reaches that magic number of negative 55 millivolts, boom, an action potential will fire. And this is caused by, because the stimulus causes Na plus or sodium ion channels to open. That allows the Na plus ions to start coming into the cell. And it is this inflow of these Na plus or sodium ions which cause the neuron to become depolarized, to become more and more positive. And if it becomes positive enough, if it reaches that threshold of negative 55 millivolts, boom, all the sodium channels open, cause sodium to rush in, and you have your action potential. So basically, like the definition of an action potential is the reversal of polarity from negative 70 millivolts up to about positive 30 millivolts relative on the inside of the neuron relative to the outside. All right, I don't know why I put this slide in here. I don't think it's that important, but as the neuron becomes more and more positive during an action potential, it becomes less and less permeable to sodium. So basically that's saying those sodium channels start to begin to close. All right, so now the next stage of the action potential is the repolarization. It's basically resetting the mousetrap. An action potential is the whoosh, the mouse trap snapping shut on a mouse. Well, this is the repolarization. This is this is resetting the mouse trap for another mouse. So, as a neuron is stimulated and sodium starts to come in, if enough of it comes in, boom, you get an action potential. But that neuron needs to return back to its resting potential before it can fire another action potential. So, that's where the Na plus channels are now closed, so no more positively charged sodium can come in, but the potassium channels open. So now those K plus ions want to move from high concentration on the inside of the cell, boom, to the low concentration on the outside. And that flow of these K plus ions outside of the neuron brings that neuron back down into the negatives. And that process of bringing the neuron back down, of resetting that mousetrap, that is called repolarization. That's getting the neuron ready to fire again. All right, so then hyperpolarization. Remember, you have a neuron, it's at its resting potential of negative 70 millivolts. So it's there at negative 70 millivolts. Oh, it starts to get stimulated. So it starts to become more positive as sodium starts to leak into the neuron. It becomes more and more positive. If it reaches that magic number of negative 55 millivolts, the threshold, boom, you get an action potential. Now once it becomes that positive, remember, 
the Na plus channels close. So now sodium can no longer come in. Potassium channels open, which allow those potassium ions, those K plus ions, to move out. That brings it back down to negative with those positively charged ions moving out. Well, but these K plus channels, they're sluggish. They're, they're slow to respond. So for a brief moment, it actually goes below the negative 70 millivolts before the sodium potassium pump can return it back to the resting membrane potential. So it's this little slight area right there that is hyperpolarization where the neuron is actually more negative than its resting membrane potential of negative 70 millivolts. And this one's going to be quick because I've gone over this quite a bit. Remember the sodium potassium pumps. Those guys pump out, continuously pump out. It uses energy to pump three sodium ions out and pumps two potassium ions in. And this is what helps to establish that resting membrane potential of negative 70 millivolts, the sodium potassium pump. All right, we are almost done. I'm gonna try to do what's just important. All right, excitability, that's just like, so neurons have the ability to convert a stimulus into an action potential. Uh, remember, an action potential is basically the depolarization of a neuron from negative 70 millivolts up to positive 20 millivolts in response to some sort of stimulus. Threshold stimulus, remember, in order for a neuron to fire, it has to reach negative 55 millivolts. And this is what's going to be important. Neurons work on what's called the all or none principle. All or none. It's either going to fire a full strength action potential or it's not going to fire at all. For example, a neuron is at negative 70 millivolts. It starts to get stimulated by some sort of stimulus. So it starts to become more and more positive. If that stimulus goes away and it does not reach negative 55, an action potential will not fire. On the other hand, same thing, if it starts to become stimulated and it reaches that negative 55, that threshold, boom, it fires a full strength action potential. And the last thing, these are graded potentials. Basically, the dendrites, they're receiving uh, stimulation from the outside, from some sort of, you know, some sort of stimulus. It might be neurotransmitters or it might be, uh, you know, pressure or whatever. Graded potentials, those are small changes in the polarity. So, you know, it might start to become a little bit more positive if the neuron is being stimulated. But all that gets added up at the axon hillock. Remember, that's where the, the action potential actually starts. So these graded potentials, if you add them all up, if it reaches that negative 55 millivolts, boom, you have an action potential. Yay, the last slide. All right, so here's another graph. This is a little better graph of an action potential. So here you have a neuron at its resting membrane potential at negative 70 millivolts. Oh, starts to get stimulated by something. Maybe neurotransmitters are striking the dendrites, which allow sodium to start coming into the cell. That makes the cell less negative. Remember, if it reaches that threshold of negative 55, boom, the neuron is going to fire a full strength action potential up to about positive 30 millivolts. And as you can see here, I thought I was right. Maybe this thing's wrong, I don't know. But at this color right here, this is where the potassium ions open up, allow potassium to rush out of the cell, and that's what starts the repolarization phase. Those, all those K plus ions moving out, that starts to make the neuron negatively charged again. And the last thing I want you to see is this absolute refractory period and the relative refractory period. So you can see the absolute refractory period is this point right in here, right in there, that's the, it's the absolute refractory period is where a neuron, no matter what the stimulus, if you get hit in the head with a hammer, that neuron cannot fire again. It's not ready to, to fire. Now the relative refractory period is right in here, 
And this is where the neuron can fire again, but it'll take a very, very large stimulus in order to do it. So the neuron in this area, in the relative refractory period, it can fire, but it's gonna take a very strong stimulus. In the absolute refractory period, the neuron is unable to fire an action potential. It's not ready. The mouse trap has not been set again. All right, guys, I know this is very confusing. If you got some of it, you're in good shape. And I'll talk to you next time.